At the end of a pleasurable airboat ride through part of the Everglades, I made my way to the Seminole Indian Reservation nearby. I was eager for an insight into authentic American history. As is well known, Indians were the original population of America. The Seminole Indian lifestyle is very similar to the African traditional way of life in many respects, as I discovered when I visited the Seminole Indian village that is part of the museum in the Everglades. Tell me who you are, madam, and uh, where you live and all that. My name is uh, Linda Belletso. I live here in Big Cypress Reservation. I'm um, a member of a Seminole tribe. I make baskets. I'm uh, the famous Seminole basket maker in the tribe. And uh, I work here at the uh, Tati Museum Village. Thank you very much for talking with mm -hmm. me. I'm from Nigeria. Oh, uh, okay. Yes, Oh yeah, you're a long ways from home. All right, so please say hello to the people of Nigeria. Hi. All right, thank you. My name. What? See, my, my people call me like that. <laughs> they call you like how? Before the high sea. Oh, no. That's what they call me. My people. All right. All right. And white people call me George. Uh huh. The same thing, but my language is. So, so, so. Good evening, sir. Uh, you don't know. We don't know. Right. Right. So, you are George in English? Yes. Can you tell me your name in Seminole? Ola Hashi. Osola Hashi. Ola Hashi. I find that our cultures are very similar. You know, you have a lot of things, you know, this, the hats here, everything, it looks like Africa. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. You're I welcome. hope one day you have the opportunity sure. of coming to visit us sure. and see what we must like. be, but I'm afraid to go in there. There's a lot of crocodiles in there. But you have crocodiles here, too. <laughs> <laughs> I ran into more crocodiles when I visited an amazing museum run by the Seminole themselves. For hours, I wandered among life-size wax figures that show how the Seminoles lived traditionally in their villages before the land was overrun by the invaders from overseas who now occupy most of North America. There was much to ponder here. What would America have been like today if the land had not been forcibly seized by armed immigrants from Europe who killed and marginalized most of the prior inhabitants of the continent? In Florida, the Seminole Indians waged a desperate war of survival against U.S. armed forces in partnership with runaway slaves of African origin with whom they intermarried.
A remarkable film that is on display in the Seminole Museum tells the story of this long struggle during which the Seminole Indians and their African allies waged a successful guerrilla war from deep within the swamps for several decades. Later, one of my newfound Seminole friends summed up the Seminole legacy of resistance to the invaders. They moved about. Every time there was, there was a little place and they see a hunter, a white hunter, come by and they, they would move from one location to another. Yeah. Well, somebody might come yeah. So, you know, a lot of people were like that. They were kind of skittish. And this is one of the biggest areas where they finally located as a community before it was recognized as a Seminole tribe. So a lot of those stories kind of faded out and a lot of stories at that time, back about a uh, hundred years ago, um, there, there was a time where the government came in and said, we'll give you this sack of money if you leave this land and you go to a, a place over in Oklahoma, a place called Oklahoma. And uh, they agreed. And they took that sack of money and they got on the ship and they left. Yeah. So, but these people, this band here, were the ones who refused to leave and said that. And what that means is, we're the people who fought and came here, and we're the people of this land, and we live here. And this is where we're going to stay. This is where we stand. We'll keep the fight going in order to survive here. And this is where they stay. And that's what that means. And uh, that's uh, so the people who left were the ones who gave up. And they said they sold their spirits. So they, they look at them as dead people over there in Oklahoma. You know, the Seminoles, they say Seminoles. But, you know, we see them as, you know, people who surrendered and left us with a battle. All too soon, it was time for me to leave Florida. I flew out of Miami, my mind filled with many revelations from the past, traveling through landscapes and clouds over which the ghosts of the valiant Seminole and African warriors seemed to hover.